ladies and gents? It's T Biz here, and we've got the Almighty. One of the probably one of the, oh, it's hard to say because this will probably be one of the best or top reaction figures to come out this year. Even though we've got some doozies like Paul Bailoff, we've oh, man, they re they're really killing it right now. They released a McBain wave for the Simpsons, which I can't afford, but I like to get. But oh well, it is what it is. Can't you know? Can't get it all, but um, can't you know, can't take it with you as well. But um. With that said, man, we have uh, Cliff Burton, man, the mighty Cliff Burton, base god, base lord, base master, dude, um, pretty much an irreplaceable member of original Metallica, or, yeah, pretty much Metallica, I would say original because they had Ron McGovney before they had Cliff Burton, and after Cliff they had uh, Jason Newstead, and after Jason Newstead we got Robert Trujillo, so yeah, man, um, Cliff Burton, dude, yeah, I just... I always have to refer back to Cliff them all because I remember as a kid back in the day, I think my first Metallica, I think when I was first introduced to Metallica from uh, Injustice for All, I was in sixth grade. That's when it came out. Um, that's when I started getting into like learning about like a lot of good punk rock, like the Dead Kennedys and the Misfits. Um, later discovering Slayer like a year later after that and Overkill and a lot of other good bands later also get an Iron Maiden as soon as I got into junior high too but in sixth grade it was pretty much actually middle school it was pretty much Bon Jovi, Poison, like the Beastie Boys and stuff like that run DMC and um and then Guns N' Roses and after Guns N' Roses that's pretty much when like there was Metallica, Anthrax and Exodus had the that tour with uh Halloween and Headbangers Ball was on MTV back then, so that introduced me to a lot of stuff. But pretty much Injustice for All. That was pretty much the taboo album to have around the house. Listening on cassette with your earphones. And then I had to backtrack to, um, I guess, Ride the Lightning. And then later, Garage Days, or your visitor or whatever. And uh, and then later on, Kill Em All and then Masters of Puppets. It, it's kind of, it was all kind of just backwards going from there. But... I'd have to say Ride the Lightning's probably my top favorite Metallica album. I feel like that album has more of a like a new wave of British metal feel to it because I guess they've said too in interviews and documentaries that they felt like they had were able to put more time into Ride the Lightning versus Kill 'Em All because Kill 'Em All, which was really originally I guess was Metal Up Your Ass, that um Kill 'em all just kind of sounds like a punk album. I think uh, Harley Flanagan of the Chromax called them white bad brains because they kind of sound like bad brains, and it's kind of have a punky feel to it, like punky thrash, you know. And they're you know, all the big four are pretty much godfathers of thrash, speed metal, whatever you want to call it, power metal. I wouldn't say power metal, but I think they considered themselves power metal at one point. But I'm pretty much rambling, excuse me. And we're trying to party it up in honor of Cliff here, and. uh Man, this is such an awesome figure to behold and to have. And uh, it's 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 amazing, dude. And I didn't even know it was gonna come out. I had no idea this figure was gonna exist. I think a friend of a friend on the YouTubes here or on Instagrams probably told me, oh, they're coming out with the cliff. I had no idea. I had I'm totally ignorant. And um Yeah, and look what we have here. We have Cliff Burton, man, with awesome lightning striking in the back. He's got his iconic skull ring. He's wearing his Misfit shirt, which we're both Misfit fans. And um, one of my best friends from years ago, we were friends for 20 years until he died, about 20 or 19 years until he died, got me into the Misfits when I was about sixth grade. So that's the whole time of uh, being in sixth grade back in the, what was this, 89, 90, um, discovering Metallica, discovering Misfits, discovering Anthrax, discovering a lot of good punk rock and metal, and just like discovering like later bands like Fugazi and just having my mind open to different stuff. Cause before then it was all just, like I said, poison and stuff like that. And, you know, and Lisa Lisa and the cult jam and crap like that, you know, it wasn't, you know, it, yeah, I mean, you truly had to discover alternative music, you know, to speak and they're not alternative, but an alternative to pop, which yeah, would be like, you know, thrash metal, hardcore stuff like that, punk, all that good stuff. Anyways, yeah, Cliff Burton reaction figure, man. Very fucking cool. Oop, pardon my French, but hey, it's Cliff here. <laughs> Here's a look at the back of the card. And once again, this is art by Ed Repka, I believe. 
Let me see. Let's see. 2021, the Burton Family Estate. The Misfit Skull is a registered trademark. The license. Yeah, that's cool. Cyclopean Music Inc. And um, photo by Harold Oyman. Oymoon. And Ed Repka, 2021, I believe. Let me see if I'm getting that last name right. Oymoon. Harold Oymoon. I don't know. Maybe I'm pronouncing it wrong. But I think this is from the infamous Day of the Green show that uh, we have a clip of in here, I believe. Let's see. Clifford Lee Burton was born in Castro Valley, California. Let's see. On February 10th, which last week was Cliff Burton Day, 1962. The major rager, <laughs> bassist in Metallica. That's what, uh, what was it? Mustaine said. The major rager. <laughs> oh, man. Good old Mustaine. Anyways. And Metallica Cliff became one of the most influential musicians in heavy metal. His life ended suddenly on September 27th, 1986, in a tour bus accident in Sweden. His legacy continues to live on as an icon of individuality. Uh, proceeds will benefit the Cliff Burton Scholarship Fund. That's awesome. That is really cool. That is freaking awesome. And just once again, the card art is awesome. You have this vibrant blue lightning like ride the lightning just popping right over the burton name that is awesome and it's awesome how supportive his family was of his music and his talent and i, I think that says a lot it says a heck of a lot man and just uh man i, I wish i could have seen metallica back then but i i was only blessed to see metallica with uh jason newstead before i think uh, this is right before um i think allison chains was off of that tour but they were supposed to be on it but Later that year, um, or around that time, that uh, Lane Stanley died. So, yeah, man, I could have saw, I think uh, the first time I ever saw, or only time I ever seen Metallica is with Fight, Suicidal Tendencies, and Candlebox here at South Park Meadows in Austin. Anyways, it was an awesome show. It was good. <laughs> it was long, really long. But anyways, I'm going to shut up, and we're going to get this figure, hopefully, out of here, and, uh, and check him out. But we also got to just look at the card art, man, how... Ed Repka captured his image, his visage, and just did really good work. And I believe this figure sold out, which is crazy. I didn't know it sold out at all, but yeah, I think it sold out, which makes sense. It should sell out. You should have one for yourself, one to open, and one to gift to somebody. <laughs> it makes it makes a lot of sense. But yeah, let's go ahead and get this guy open and check him out. And here he is, folks, the mighty Cliff Burton. This is an interesting figure. The way they made his legs, you kind of have to position him like he's rocking. Like if you look ever so closely. Yeah, he's like pretty much in a rocking kind of because just the way his feet are slanted, you kind of got to tilt him forward a little bit. So he's like rocking. That's awesome, man. That, that's so cool. There's his iconic misfit shirt. There's an up close look. He's got a sneer like going like he's just like, ah, oh, just some aggression going, man. And, uh, Nice little scum stash or mustache. That's awesome. That is cool. Oh, this figure is so rad. Cool misfit skull. Because he, he, he got the Metallica guys in the misfits. You know? And that's what's awesome, man. Is he had good taste in music. He knew he knew his music, man. He knew melody. He knew how to put together some really good tunes. and really good. He's got the ripped jeans. Bell bottoms or boot cuts, man. He's got some boots on. Oh, dude. That's so cool. Man, or whatever shoes these are. I don't think they're boots, but whatever shoes he was wearing at the time. But I can't remember if this is a Ernie Ball base or what. I don't think it's a Rickenbacker. I don't think it's a Rick because uh, Lenny plays a Rick. But, uh, but yeah, he's got the... I think it's a music man. I could be wrong. Let me know in the comments what you think, which base this is. Because I know it's the one he's playing, what we've seen in many videos that he's playing and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, that's interesting. And then he comes with the Kill em All. Hammer, which is rad, which they said, I guess, in a documentary that he used to carry around a hammer to destroy stuff. And I guess the story is they wanted to call it Metal Up Your Ass, but they couldn't because record labels wouldn't take that, you know, album with that title. And so they had to call it. He was like, I guess Cliff said something like, ah, or, you know, the record labels or the record industry, something like that or whatever. Kill them all, you know, and pff, there you got kill them all. So, yeah, that, that's pretty awesome. Just, ugh, such an awesome figure, man. And then we have, uh, where's our good old buddy, uh, Paul Bailoff? Which, if you watched, I watched it when I, because I had to check this out, man. Because um, here we got Paul Bailoff. And if you've ever watched the awesome documentary, Murder in the Front Row, it has to do a lot with these two guys, with Paul Bailoff and 
Cliff Burton has a heck of a lot to do with them. And it's it's kind of like in a weird way, like, well, not in a 100% straight up way, I guess, a tribute to both of them in a, in a way. Maybe more so Paul, but Cliff too, you know? And it's just so, man, ah, it's it's a really good documentary along with the, the Chuck Schuldiner, uh, was it uh Killed by Death documentary? That one's really good too. But anyways, um, yeah. So we got two major major ragers right here, two major metal icons right here. And uh because without Exodus, you wouldn't have Kirk Hammett. The you know this Kirk Hammett doing you know Metallica and them moving on forward and stuff, and just like, yeah, man, uh, it's good stuff. And I'm I'm a both uh a Metallica and Megadeth fan, and um it's weird because in in some ways I have more respect for Megadeth nowadays, or for a long time, I love Megadeth, but learning of the feud and all that stuff years later, I have more respect for Megadeth, but I listen to Metallica probably more. So it's, there you go, there you have it with that, you know. Let me know what your opinion on that is in the comments, I would like to hear it, and um, what your favorite Metallica album is too, I'd like to hear that too, and maybe your even favorite song or favorite riff, that'd be cool too. You know, anyways, man, <laughs> this has been an awesome look at the Cliff Burton figure. Um, I think we need to do some size comparisons with, um, I guess we'll have them uh, next uh, to a, here's a, compared to a five points Joker. He's a little bit taller, it seems. They're about, might be roughly the same size. And here's um, Bionic Woman. <laughs> she looks like she's going to see a Metallica show, man. <laughs> it was a good play. And uh, I think that's about it we got for size comparisons. Um, and the good old Misfits Fiend. There you go. So you got to do that too. And good old Storm Shadow because maybe he wants to get caught in the mosh too, you know, so to speak. <laughs> well, watch out. Can't get in there with them. All the pointy objects. Anyways, folks, that's been a look at Cliff. He is awesome. Such a great figure, man. Once again, we got to get an up close look. They did a really good job. They put buttons on his shirt, the paint and all that. It's really nice. Even his collar sculpted in there, under his hair. Just everything, Ooh, everything's pretty good, man. I, I like it a lot. Totally rad, man, totally rad. Because he's, as far as bass playing goes, he's irreplaceable, man. There's just like, there's been a lot of good bass players, you know, my favorites are probably Mike Watt from the Minutemen, Firehose, you know, Flea, Getty Lee, you know, Sting. Um, who else am I missing? Uh, Les Claypool, Cliff Burton. They're, they're all like, those to me are all the base gods. Then you got Lammy. You got, you got a lot. But also another thing, too, that we got to bring up, which is kind of funny, is um, that they're like Super 7's had a lot of base gods, you know, and uh, base oriented people, you know. Like uh, Lemmy, like Jerry Only, because without Jerry Only, we wouldn't have the Misfits, and the Misfits had a good influence on Metallica. So yeah, there you go. Which, when are we going to get a Doyle and a Danzig? When are we going to get a, a Dio figure? When are we, a Super 7, when are we going to get a, um, we never got our Ozzy Werewolf. Um, when are we going to get a Dimebag Daryl, you know? <laughs> Better yet, when are we going to get a Dave Mustaine? When are we going to get, you know, we got we to gotta get some more stuff, and... Uh, there's good old pizzazz from uh, Jim. So, oops. anyhow, <laughs> you get the idea. It's been a lot of base people, even though she doesn't want to stand up and she just ruined this whole bit. But, uh, anyways, it's a lot of base players. So there's there's some there's some base love going on at Super Seven, but we got to get some uh, guitar god love too in there somewhere, man. Be, uh, anyways, I know a lot of um, Super Seven and like heavy metal reaction fans and stuff like that would like to get more figures definitely so leave you know, in the comments also what metal icons you'd like to see you know because i would definitely like to get a dave mustaine with the fringy jacket in the era that would be kind of cool and um let's be honest it'd be kind of cool to have all metallica even even a uh, even lars because if you got a good lars figure man you could do so many funny things with that figure um <laughs> anyhow but yeah this has been a look at uh, cliff burton awesome Awesome musician. Ah, oh, dude. Wish I could have seen him with him, but yeah. Way too young for that, and now way too old. But anyways, because he's gone. But anyways, I'm going to shut up and quit babbling, because uh, that's enough babbling. But uh, 
I think this figure sold out. Hopefully they'll re-release it. I don't know if Big Bad Toy Store is going to get it in. So you might want to look on the internet and see if, uh, if you can find it anywhere. Anyways, thanks for watching y'all and have a good one. All right, later.